Hey guys, Gear here, and this time I'm going to be doing another review. Uh, I'll probably do something else next week, probably something about a series I've already read, most likely Beastars. I don't know, I've read Watched. But uh, yeah, for now, <laughs> we got this, and I'll try to remember to do the actual like ratings for each like part, like the characters and everything. The last few times I've been forgetting. But yeah, let's get straight into the video. You already know what you clicked on, so let's get straight into it. This time I'm going to give a synopsis before I like talk about the story and everything. A story that takes place in 1929, reimagining the life of the blues legend Robert Johnson, and is named after a song by him, which takes place in not only a unique time, because you don't really see that many series that happen in 1929 or in that general time in the last few hundred years, you also get to see it in the Midwest, where it is also something that you don't see a lot, and is the story of a man who sells his really sells his soul to the devil to become a better bluesman and eventually he ba is basically the story of him living his life with a guy called clyde barrow later on this series was put on hiatus at around chapter 33 i believe and has been on hiatus since 2008 yeah what the series lacks in well chapters in general it makes up for in great characters story and even better art so as for the actual story, I definitely think it has like some occasional like slow spots, but it has some pretty good peaks and it's overall pretty consistent. I definitely think it's I think it's the first music manga I've read and one of the first music series I've seen in general. So I can't really tell you if it portrays like all the how well the music is as I don't know what I like compare it to. The only other thing I've seen was like you're lying April and that has actual sound so it's hard to compare but the way they I don't know how to say it, the way like the blues like the whole kind of story arc I guess about like what the blues is is kind of good I guess it definitely feels like it's unnecessarily quote-unquote deep like they try to make it seem like more than it is personally i could be wrong it could be more i just don't really see it that way the and i mean not the anime the, the manga left off on a not the end left off but you know the hiatus started at least for the translators at not the best time it's uh i'd honestly be pretty interested to see what the rest happened with mcdonald and everything like that the mystery in this in the series element is actually really good and they have like a lot of twists and turns especially in some scenes where it's just like every time you twist the page you something new could happen and there's always like a new twist it's gonna be a slight spoil it doesn't really affect the story too much but i'm gonna mention it anyway but there's this one scene where clyde is like going into this old guy's ma mansion mcdonald's mansion and as he's walking i don't remember exactly what happened but he like he finds it into this like secret room or whatever and at first you start to think oh he has kids in his basement because he was always around Toby and you know it, it just gave the impression that way especially the way he referred to Toby and then more time goes on it's like oh that's okay he just has dolls in it which are and which Clyde even mentions are oddly realistic and as you start to see you see names you see dates you see one that has a different skin tone than the rest the same skin tone as RJ and then you see like a name but no date and then you start to realize oh these aren't just normal dolls these at least person i took what i took from it was that they were dolls made from human like hair human nails and everything like that. that's why they're so realistic and that's why mcdonald is like that's why he's portrayed so evil let's say which i think the way like the way that scene is done is really honestly it's great it's like you there's you believe one thing and one page convinces you of something else and then it's something completely different you never would have expected scenes like that are amazingly done in this series there's always suspense i feel like this is the series also does like suspense and kind of like surprises really well which is also due to the art but it just does that really well i don't really know how else i'll explain it but like on it, it's also a psychological horror which could probably explain some of that really it makes a, it's a psychological horror historical and supernatural which honestly adds up the supernatural part i thought well i didn't know it was a supernatural at first i just like the 
supernatural things were just like some philosophical thing it was trying to throw in there and i realized it wasn't because um also another spoiler like skip ahead 10 seconds i don't really don't know i'll probably put a timestamp on the video but like as you're reading he like are just playing music or whatever and then he start suddenly starts to grow another hand and i like as i was reading like oh that they're trying to show how good he's like playing right he's playing so well it's like he has a hand with 10 fingers and then I just kept thinking, oh, he's gone crazy. He's, he's hallucinating. That's why it shows up. But then other people see that hand, and I start to, and you start to realize it's not, um, not you know, a hallucination or something else. He actually has a ten finger hand, and stuff like that is also done really well. Uh, the story in general is really just um, really good, unique, especially the setting. I really can't name how many series have that type of setting in the 1920s and in north america it's really let's say odd that that happens i think 1920s in general isn't that really common except like they might show a war or something but really nothing much stories really engaging and generally really intriguing i personally was brought to it by the art and the story which for i'm pretty sure like the first time or one of the first times my favorite thing about the series isn't the characters it's actually the art and the story because one partially the story is really good and the art's really really good and two, the characters aren't the best. They're still good, they just aren't the best. But yeah, I'd give this story like, I wanna say an eight out of 10. It's really, it's like a really good story. It doesn't really like blow anything out of the water, but it's still, you know, it's a solid story that's unique and you really don't see it everywhere. It, I would give it a nine or like an 8.5, but there are a lot of points where are hard to read in the aspect that they could be pretty slow, especially like in the first few chapters. When you're in like the whole McDonald's city, it really picks up a lot. But before that, it's not really too like fast or really intriguing. Do you know what? I'll, I'm gonna change that. I'll give it a 7.5 for the same reasons I just told before. If it wasn't for that, I'd probably give it an 8.5 or a 9. But considering like it takes a while to get better, I don't wanna give it a 9 or an 8. Anyways, as for the characters, uh, the characters, I definitely would say the cast, or just the char the whole like character section of the series is really carried by Clyde and RJ. I mean, there are like decent characters, I guess, in like the, you know, the arc that we're currently in, but it really isn't anything too special. And they, they're really just there. They don't really get development or anything or really portray any thematic importance. And it really doesn't, they don't need to, right? It's not like a series where it's heavily focused on characters or driven by characters. It's really just the story and just RJ and Clyde, how they, you know, interact. It's really more important that way. But really, like, the story, I mean, not the story, the characters aren't the most important part of the series. I mean, it'd be nice if there were more good characters, right? There's only, I don't even want to say RJ is that great of a character. I mean, he's a good character, right? I give him, like, a, a 6 to a 7, but he isn't really amazing. Clyde, I really, I, I enjoyed Clyde. He's a very pretty human character. He's obviously completed. I wish he got more. I mean, wish there was more chapters to get into his character more because with what we got, there isn't really too much you can really, you know, say. Not say, but more like there isn't really too much you can really say. I mean, he personally isn't top ten side characters or anything because we don't have enough about him, but. He definitely had the potential while he while the, while I was reading the series. It's just that there's just too little to make him be that high. So I probably, I, I definitely would give him like a 7.5 or an 8. And overall, I'd give the cast like a 5 or a 6. Because aside from Clyde and RJ, there aren't really any good characters. I'd say decent characters, but a lot of the characters are really forgettable. And you can really only remember like three characters' names and the dog's names. So it's really difficult to actually like appreciate the characters in the series. That's not like the series being bad or anything, right? It's not, it's just not a series that really focuses a lot on the characters, right? It's not like almost any other series where it's character driven or a combination. It's really heavily like driven on the journey of those, you know, of what's it called? RJ and Clyde. And just the story in general. Also, if you couldn't tell, RJ is just Robert Johnson, but that's what they call him in the series, RJ. So, but yeah, there isn't really much I want to mention about the story because of that. They don't really have anything too special to talk about. 
So uh, I'm gonna talk about the last and arguably my favorite thing about the series, the art and just like the paneling and everything about the art. So yeah, the art, uh, in Me and the Devil Blues, the art is not only is it very detailed, it's also pretty realistic a lot of the time. And when it goes into its more like psychological aspects, I guess, or when I talk about the music, it really, which it, it really portrays emotion really well. I guess is the best way to explain it. Uh, the music sequences are great. You could probably read a good portion of the manga without the dialogue, just pure visual storytelling, because the panel, because just like the art does, it portrays what it's trying to do really well. The paneling is honestly beautiful. It's really like it isn't always like your generic like random cubes. There's a lot of different like shapes in it, different order, but it all is easy and fast to read. But yeah, it has a lot of ra- like really good panels. It does um, what I think some other horror mangas mangakas do, where like they have like they set up one page and then the next page is like horror scene. They do that really well in this series, which is probably what I was talking about like with the jump scares and everything like that. They really like you know have, know how to make like the page flip really sudden and really surprising, which really helps with the paneling up and with, with trying to keep you engaged. The volume covers are, covers are really good. I really didn't get to see them a lot because for some reason, either I didn't notice they were volume covers, or the site I was using really didn't show them. But from what I've seen, they're pretty decent. They're pretty good. Really though, the art really stands out in like music sequences or really anything else is in action sequences too the occasional action sequences do really well and jump scares i think like those three main situations really help with making the art really well and that's when it really shines you know what i mean basically what i'm trying to say is the series peaks especially the art when and like a music scene or an action scene is happening I think that's when the author puts either most the most time or the most work into the art and just the paneling and everything about it. But yeah, uh, I don't think the series, besides the art, has anything that I would say is in my top 10 or even top 20, really. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, I just, I recently read more series that I find to have more things in my top 10 or my top 20. i that probably say the series is in my top 30, I guess. It's not too great, it's not bad necessarily it's actually a really good series it's just i have a lot of other series over it for many reasons oh by the way before i forget the art i'd give like a 9 or 9.5 anyways um it's not that the series has any really big flaw it's just that it lacks something really good that isn't the art you know like it doesn't have a really good cast of characters or a really good story it really just doesn't get carried by the art but like the art when the art is the best part about something for the most part I generally don't find the series to be in my top 10. I'll find it enjoyable, yeah. It just won't be in my top 10 or a top 20. I generally prefer if the series had either a more enjoyable cast or just a better story overall. I'm not saying it's bad, you know, I'm just, you know, saying if it had higher peaks at least, then it'd easily get top 10. I'd probably give the series, like, if I was to say, let's say a 1 to 100 recommendation rating, probably like a 75. Um,. That's because the series is, I mean, it's not, it's a good series. I, th- I think some people should read it. And if you, especially if you're in a music manga and it definitely has, you know, it, I also forgot to mention this, but uh, as you know, it's around the time where racism was more apparent and more, I guess, accepted, I guess is the best word for it. There's, um, you know, language that, you know, not everyone would be, that some people are sensitive to is all I'm gonna say. You should know. You under, you should understand what I mean by that. Uh, I'll try. And I won't show any panel with the with the. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's really all I have to say for the series. Uh, next video might be a B Stars video, is what I want to do, but I'm not too sure. That or it'll be Tokyo Ghoul review. I'm not sure. I have to really decide. Uh, but yeah, that's the end of the video. Let me know what you thought down below. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and peace.